and welcome to the GC80 Show. My name is Amanda Skofsted, Public Affairs Officer for the Episcopal Church. Today's guest is none other than the Most Reverend Michael Bruce Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate of the Episcopal Church. I had the chance to sit down virtually with Bishop Curry. He and his home office in Raleigh, and I and the Episcopal Church's digital media team in our studio in New York City. We talked about the Episcopal Church's Jesus in America research project that checked in with more than 3,000 Americans on their beliefs about Jesus. What we found is that 84% of Americans across the board, including atheists, believe that Jesus was an important spiritual figure. Jesus' followers, however, did not fare so well in public opinion. We learned there is a significant perceptual gap between how Christians view themselves and how non-Christians view them. Bishop Curry offered his thoughts on how we mind that gap, how we become a church that looks and loves like Jesus, especially in how we do the work of racial reconciliation, evangelism, and the care of creation. Let's take a look. Bishop Michael Curry, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thank you. Glad to do it. So this past year, we, um, as a church, on, unleashed this study, Jesus in America, conducted by Ipsos Marketing Research. What to you stood out most from that exercise? Well, I mean, a number of things, um, but, the, but the main one that stood out, one was that, that this was a comprehensive uh, snapshot of the American population. I mean, um, um, and, and you had religious, non-religious, um, uh, uh, a Christian, uh, a Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, uh, all over, all geographical types, all racial groups. Um, this was a snapshot of the American population. And when th they took that picture, if you will, and asked about the significance of Jesus of Nazareth, um, is this somebody we should pay attention to? Um, 84% of the people, 84%, that's extraordinary. 84% said basically that Jesus of Nazareth is, is a spiritual figure that we must pay attention to, who has something to say to us, who has wisdom to share, who has hope to offer. 84%, that's extraordinary. Now that's not all yeah. Christians, that's not even all uh, theists, that's probably atheists in that, but Jesus mm -hmm. plays well in Pretoria. Um, and, and that's extraordinary. Then when, when the, a similar question was asked about um, Christians or the church, uh, the percentage dropped uh, precipitously from 84% to under 50%. Um, asked about um, uh, how has the church dealt with, with race and racism? Um, and, and almost 50% said that the church has not dealt well with and has often been an instrument of racism and that kind of thing. That's mm. extraordinary. There's a gap between Jesus and us, yeah. um, or the perceptions of us. Um, when when asked about um, uh, the church and uh, Christian self perceptions of themselves, uh, Christians by and large said uh, that we are we are a kind and um, loving and um, uh, gracious and welcoming people. Um, people outside of the church said. Uh, well, um, we find uh, Christian people very often off-putting, arrogant, um, uh, 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 self-centered, uh, 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 a negative about matters intellectual. I mean, on and on, on, whole yeah. open, homophobic. There's a gap. And so I, I would suggest that we must be about the business, as they say in, in the UK, we must mind the gap. Um, in the UK, you see those uh, underground, uh, the London underground. Yeah. Uh, mind the gap, those signs, um, and the gap. Um, it took me a while to figure out what is the gap there. Well, the gap is between the platform and the subway. And that's a dangerous spot because sometimes it's narrow and sometimes it's wide. And mm -hmm. if you don't pay attention to the gap, you're liable to miss or fall or trip or hurt an ankle or something. You got to mind the gap. Um, we would say pay attention to the gap. Pay attention to the gap. It is. Um, it can be dangerous if you don't pay attention to it. And yet it can also be the way to get on the subway train so that you can go somewhere. We so, must find the gap between Jesus and we who are followers of Jesus. And we must find ways, if you will, to close the gap, not by bringing Jesus down, by raising us up. How do we close that gap? Oh, oh, it's very clear. We close the gap. 
by actually taking seriously what Jesus taught us, both in his words and in his life and in the manner of his life, by taking that seriously to the point that I am going to live a life by the grace of God. I can't just do this on sheer willpower, but it takes some willpower. I am going to live my life and we are going to live our lives as a church so that we really resemble Jesus of Nazareth, to love like Jesus, to give like Jesus, to forgive like Jesus, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God, just like Jesus. And the closer we get to living and being like Jesus, then the world will know they are Christians by their love, is the mm. old best. You know, you've, you've spoken also, um, I, I know there's, there seems to be a linkage between these ideas of how we as a church do evangelism mm. and how we as a church engage in the work of racial reconciliation. Mm -hmm. How do you think about the relationship of those two things? You know, what is what was stunning in the survey mm -hmm. was that the perception of Christians and the church as not seriously engaging in the work of racial justice and reconciliation has undermined our ability to evangelize, to share the faith, because we contradict the faith. And so racism, as it turns out, and it came out from the survey, I didn't expect to see that. Racism is one of the things in which people perceive a contradiction between what we say and what we do yeah. and what we say and do and what Jesus of Nazareth is about. How do we come? How do we become the kind of disciples on a day to day basis? How do we do the spiritual work to become those people? How do we become icons as you've as you've described? It's real spiritual work. Um, and, and, and for example, in the, the way of love um, resources that, that were shared, um, there are a number of resources that are built around um, fairly basic things, but they really matter. Um, mm. um, scripture matters. Um, um, listening to scripture, reading scripture, being steep immersed um, in scripture, uh, being immersed um, in, in, in the teachings of of, of Christians over the centuries, um, the tradition, if you will, for us in that Book of Common Prayer, you know, as we pray, um, as we pray, so we believe. Mm, uh, yeah. Um, that the prayer book. How do we pray? What what what's what? What am I being taught? How am I being formed hmm. in the Book of Common Prayer? You know, I mean that that that's 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 critical. But worship. I mean, uh, 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 study and listening to Scripture. Um, genuine prayer taking time out. Um, my real prayer time is in the morning. I do morning yeah. and evening prayer, but, mm -hmm. but my real deep prayer time, most of the time, is in the morning before the world wakes up. Um, <laughs> and that's when I do my intercessory prayers. I get out my prayer, uh, a prayer list is on my iPhone mm -hmm. um, in the little note section. I do that. And, um, you know, sometimes I reflect on uh, the lessons and sometimes I just do one lesson. Uh -huh. And and if something comes, I kind of jot it down or I think about it. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just read through. But when I get to the prayer time, um, that's where um, I read the prayers because they help to they, they're almost like, um, you know, like diving boards. Um, uh -huh. You know what I mean? You got yeah. you, yeah. you, know, you do one colic and that's got you going. They do another colic and that's got you going. And then you do the third colic and then you uh -huh. springboard off and then I start praying for folks. Um, yeah. Whoever's asked me to pray, I got, got my little list and I go through that. Um, and then sometimes I actually am, you know, I can't, I, I wish that I was a Howard Thurman contemplative. Um, <laughs> you got to be who you are. Um, and, right. and yet there, I know there are times <laughs> when I do find myself after that, just sitting and thinking. And, you know, I remember my grandmother doing that. Well, I think that's what she was doing. She would just, in the evening, she would just be sitting Mm. And and just kind of sitting. And I find myself sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that the prayer time leads me to just sit. And in a way, it's like it says in the Psalms, um, Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. And, and it's a point of stillness mm. in that point of stillness that that I think the spirit of God 
and my spirit meet in a conscious kind of way. Mm. Bishop Curry, there's another interesting finding that rose from this research, and it was about mm -hmm. the relationship of our witness to the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And also um, uh, in that, our witness as it pertains to the care of creation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do we think about the interconnection of evangelism, racial reconciliation, care of creation, and how to, how to hang on to credibility and, and perhaps rebuild credibility with the next generation when we think about the future church? How do you think about these things? A selfish church, a church that lives for self alone, as our, and people who live for self alone, are not desirable even mm. by the world. Yeah. Now, Jesus said that whoever would save his life would lose it, and whoever would lose his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it, for what does it profit someone to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What does it profit? Um, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke of uh, Jesus as the man for others. Yeah. And if we truly are following him, then we must rise above self and discover the true self hmm. reflecting the image of God that we see in Jesus of Nazareth. Ephesians gets at that in, in the epistle to Ephesians. But I say all of that to say that our evangelism, our commitment to the work of racial justice and reconciliation, mm -hmm our commitment to the care of creation are intertwined. They are interrelated. Um, for general population, the contradiction between our commitment to racial justice and reconciliation contradicts our evangelism work. Yep. It de-authenticates it, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we as a church have been working at this, and I thank God for the work that we have been doing. Um, and we just have to do more and, and dig deeper. And yep. we've got to help our culture in the various countries where we are to engage this work. Um, and it is also true with care of creation. Our commitment, this is God's world. It's not our world. And, and to <laughs> defile the creation is to defile the creator. It is blasphemy. It is blasphemy. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. As the psalmist says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I mean, this is God's world. We, we dare not let it be defiled. And, and younger generations, look, I'm 69 years old. Um, you know, my time on earth is I got less time ahead of me than I had before me. That's just the way it is. Um, and, and, and yet younger generations, they've got a life ahead of them. Right. Um, yep. And our, our failure, the failure of our governments internationally, um, the, the, the failure of us as individuals, the fa our failure to do the hard work that's necessary um, to, to, to slow down climate change, to, to do what we can to have a sustainable environment for generations yet to come and generations that have not been born is an act of utter and absolute self-centeredness. Yeah. And that will judge us. We mm. will be judged. And so young people see this. Yeah. You're yeah. saying you're not leaving us a world and you're not leaving our children and our grandchildren and generations yet unborn. And so the work of caring for God's creation, of, of advocating um, with our respective governments, um, as well as doing what we can do as individuals, but also as collective entities, as corporate and social entities. This, this, is, this is God's work. On this idea of becoming, loving as God loves, and also um, becoming the sort of Christians um, in whom Jesus is seen, you, you wrote something several months back um, that speaks to this idea. I did. Of look <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, of of what it what it looks like to um, love like Jesus, to think like Jesus, to act like oh. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you might want to share something from that. Yeah, you know, I, I, it was a it was a poem I wrote. It was a number of months ago, 
um, after a number of conversations. And, 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 you know, I began to realize that, you know, we are, um, you know, I love this church. Um, um, I mean, I love the Lord, number one, but, but I love the church. Um, I, I've come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, as the guide of my life, as my friend. I'm not his best disciple. I know that. But, but you know, I'm going to keep on keeping on and I'm going to get to heaven one day. Uh, not too soon, but, but, but one day. <laughs> Please I, not I, soon. I want to get to heaven. But um, I, I've learned about that Jesus. I've learned about our God. Um, I've learned all of that in many and varied ways in this church. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for that. And I believe this church has something to commend itself, that somehow that we are, um, we're, 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 we're striving. We, we're pressing on, as St. Paul says in Philippians. We're pressing on to the, toward the mark of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We haven't made it yet but we're pressing on. And so that poem I wrote, I said, you know, we are becoming, uh, yeah. we are becoming. We're in process. In process, exactly. Yeah. And that's as good as it gets actually mm -hmm. on this side of Jordan. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's what Paul says in, in Philippians. I press on, not that I've already attained, but I press on toward the mark of the upward call. So we are becoming um, a, a church that, that, that truly seeks to be, as, as Jesus said, quoting the prophets, a house of prayer for all people. And living into what that means, all people, all of God's children, we, yeah. we are seeking to become that. We are, and, and, and a church like that is a church where there's no room for white supremacy or anybody's supremacy of anybody over anybody else. We're becoming that. We're not there. Of course, we're not there. We're not perfect. That's why I hope at this convention we will we'll do work um, from the, uh, the working group on truth telling, uh, racial reckoning. Um, and healing um, that will help us as a church-wide community uh, follow the lead of many of our dioceses to look into how have we failed in our racial past? How have we failed each other? Not for anybody to beat up on anybody. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. So that we learn from the mistakes and the sin of the past, learn from it, and then turn. You see, take yep. those learnings and apply them for a new day where we can join together um, 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 uh, joining hands together, all of God's children, all of us together, join hands together. And from those learnings from the past, turn and learn and build a new society, a new community, where as the old slaves used to say, there's plenty of good room for all God's children. We're, we're becoming that church. We're not there yet, but we're becoming that church. And, and, and as we become that, there will be no room for any ism, that mm -hmm. puts any child of God or God's creation down. There will be no room. In fact, as we become that, and as we begin to reflect that and reflect the life of Jesus in our lives, in our corporate life, we'll begin to look like Jesus. And when we look like Jesus, that 84% will look at us and see him. Amen. That's the church. I pray we are becoming. And when the role by is God's called grace. up yonder, by God's grace, when the role is called up yonder, when people speak of the Episcopal Church, they'll think of people who love and live like Jesus. Bishop Michael Curry, thank you so much for this. Thank you for your good work. Thank you for your time and energy today. We really appreciate this. Oh, oh, thank you, Amanda. To find out more about the Jesus in America research, visit episcopalchurch.org and click on Jesus in America. Special thanks to our partners at Church Pension Group and Tritank Experimental Lab for making this show possible. I encourage you to learn more about our sponsors in the description and links that accompany this video.